Well, you know what we say here at All N, if it's a day ending in Y, it's a day with yet another story on how something Republican freshman George Santos said about his life never actually happened. Now, today it's his claim, which itself grew out of a whole bunch of other apparent lies he had to defend, but his claim was that his mother was, quote, in her office in the South Tower on 9-11. She survived the tragic events, but passed away a few years later when she lost her battle to cancer. Okay, that was his claim. His mother passed away actually 15 years later in 2016, at least according to his Twitter feed. But uh, the claim was his mother survived the attack on the South Tower uh, and then died from the inhalation. Now, newly uncovered records show that not only was his mother not working in the World Trade Center on 11, she wasn't even in the United States. According to immigration records shared with NBC News, she left New York for Brazil in 1999 and wasn't readmitted to the U.S. until 2003. NBC News reached out to the office of George Santos for comment on the apparent fabrication of his mother being in 9-11. We haven't heard back. His claim that his mother was in the World Trade Center on September 11th is still on his campaign website. Now, Congressman George Santos is a liar. That seems pretty well established now. But before he was ever a candidate for office, a whole bunch of news stories suggest he was just a, a kind of compulsive serial small-time grifter with a trail of alleged scams so lengthy. Get, get this. Ten former friends, co-workers, and acquaintances of Santos have formed a group chat to compare notes. That's according to Patch.com. Now, one person in the group chat is a Brazilian woman. Her name is Adriana Coraya. She is pictured here with Santos in 2014. Now, she told Patch that Santos lived with her in Brazil and her family for a time and then in New York. First, quote, Coraya noticed cash she had in the apartment beginning to disappear. Then Santos told her, quote, the neighborhood was very dangerous and he should hold her jewelry for her. Coraya says that she never saw the jewelry again. She's not the only one who says she was scammed by Santos. Rich Ostoff is a disabled Navy veteran who suffers from PTSD and bipolar disorder. Back in 2016, he was homeless, living in a tent in New Jersey. He needed help paying for cancer surgery for his beloved service dog, pictured here, Sapphire. Ostoff says a veterinarian technician referred him to a pet charity run by Anthony DeVolder, a name that George Santos has gone by. That charity set up a GoFundMe for the cancer-stricken dog of the homeless wounded vet, Sapphire, which raised $3,000. But Ostoff says when it came time to pay for the surgery, he never got the money. He just started coming up with all these excuses. I had to do things his way. And he started laying a guilt trip on me, like if this was taking so long and it was my fault, I knew he was ripping me off and I knew that he was mining my dog and my friends and family's hearts for their money. He said that was offensive. He'd never been so offended by anything in his life. And after that, it was just, he, he was just totally Un unable to be talked to at that point. And then uh, he, he just quit answering calls, took down, he, he unfriended me on Facebook or whatever, or he deleted his Facebook page. The GoFundMe f went away completely. He took that right down off, off uh, the internet and he was gone. It, it, he was conniving. And I could, he was almost too nice. I knew there was something up with him. You could, you could see the devil behind his eyes. Uh, she might even st still be with me today. She would be 16 now. That, that, that's right about when a dog's lifespan is up. So it's his fault that she passed as early as she did. I do think that she could have been taken care of. There could have been more veterinary care, something to prolong her life. Even if they couldn't remove that thing, they could, she could have been more comfortable. Could have given her drugs or something like that. To, but he's responsible for the dog being in pain. He's responsible for her suffering. And uh, he almost was responsible for me committing suicide. That was how hard it hit me. Rick Ostoff says he doesn't want the money, he just wants justice. George Santos didn't respond to NBC News, but he told Semaphore that the story isn't true. I'm joined now by Marissa Cabus and MSNBC columnist Long Island Native, who have been covering this saga in her newsletter feature, The Daily Santos. Um, every day, there's a lot. That story is really something uh, I, I, in the hierarchy of like political optics, this really feels like it's up at the very top. 
I really believe that a person could do the most horrible things to another human being, but the second a pet is involved, it just crosses into an entirely different territory and people get so emotional about it. And so finding out that on top of everything he's claimed so far, that he helped kind of contribute to someone's pet dying, I mean, that is just like a bridge too far for most people. I mean, a homeless vet with PTSD whose cancer-stricken dog he was depending on this man to raise money for, who according to him just just absconded with it. And the other thing, you were here last time talking about the, the, the sort of one of the lies that he's told, which is that his, you know, his family was Jewish and they fled Hitler's Europe, right? And that appears to be completely unfounded and true. And you made the point that, like, that's not something you, like, mess around with in the district that he represents and the place you come from. Same goes for 9-11. Yeah, but I think it really plays into him trying to create this avatar of what the perfect candidate from New York totally, 3 is yes. going to be. Right. So, like, for example, in my town, there's a street named after someone who died in 9-11. It's very present in the district, and so many people were lost that day. So it sounds like, to me, he was kind of sitting there Googling, you know, wikipedia what happened in this district, what happened nearby, and, like, how can I bring that into my life story? That is such a great point. Like, yes, it's it's... And you have this reporting, which is really interesting, where you suggest that it's possible. We, we've had you here on the Baruch volleyball story, which is my favorite thing ever, right? That, that he told people that he had been a star at Baruch College and that he was a volleyball star led in the league title, um, that he didn't go to Baruch because so it was entirely fabricated. But there was like another Brazilian guy who, who he knew who that was so that maybe he was just like appropriating that guy's life story. Yeah, it's really interesting. He's melding parts of other people's lives and then kind of adding his own little secret sauce to it. But yeah, th this man was his boss at a, a job that he supposedly had at one point. And this man has gone underground since this story broke. He doesn't seem to want to talk about it. But yeah, he was a Berg volleyball star. Unclear if he had to get two knee replacements, like Santos claimed. But um, yeah, it's his life. I miss the two knee replacements. Um, you also have reporting today about some of his past in Brazil. Um, you talked to uh, uh, someone that was a, a friend, associate of his. Yeah, I spoke with uh, this woman named Yula Bouchard, and I'm um, sorry, Rochard, and she's based in Brazil, and she claims that she knows George from when he lived in Brazil as a teen, and that um, they, did, they did drag together. Um, Yula is a drag queen herself. She's well known in the area, a uh, city near Rio. And um, she says that, that George, and as she knew him at the time, Anthony, she said she never heard the name George. Anthony, one of his many aliases, um, was very fond of dressing up in drag. And it just sort of creates this crazy contrast with the people that he aligns himself with. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing drag. It's wonderful, but it's really hard to square that with him running as this hard right candidate. Yes, I mean, the drag has become one of the main political targets of the people that he has politically aligned himself with in the sort of modern American uh, MAGA right. I, I am, the, when, I heard, when I heard about the group chat from Patch, I mean, it does seem like, you know, from the allegation back when he was a teenager that the, the woman, the, the man that his mom as a nurse was caring for his checkbook went missing and he took those checks and the Brazilian government re reopened the case to Mr. Ostoff, the veteran. There does seem in the record a pattern of allegations of just like outright theft, criminality, petty larceny and scamming. Absolutely. And, and it's probably not hard to imagine that there's other things that could come out about him and as, as far as skirting the law and even just looking at his campaign finance i mean it's hard to know how much he knew about his own campaign finances but i think we're going to find out in the coming days that things were not on the up and up well it certainly looks that way marissa cavis whose uh, Substack has been uh diving deep on the daily santos great to have you here again thanks Still